Hi, I'm Terry Day and I'm writing my memoirs and I started with my crow. A crow came to me in the 80s and at the same time I had a baby. So it's, I guess that's where I'm going to begin. It inspired me to write the story. So right now I got like 300 pages. So I will try to stop at a certain point. I'm busy with a four week old baby. Just put her in her onesie after I gave her a bath in her plastic tub on the kitchen table. She was cooing and happy as I put her into the yellow umbrella stroller. I pushed her into the living room, which was open to the kitchen, and placed her on her blanket, one of the many blanket gifts she was given. Meanwhile, I was busy making lunch for Daddy, doing a load of laundry, and all the tasks of being a new mom. Oops. I heard a knock at the door. I peeked out the door window and saw a construction worker carrying a box. I was embarrassed because I was a mess in my maternity frock with safety pins with yellow plastic ducks pinned to my jumper for emergencies. It was a beautiful day and noticed for the first time the city took down half the pine tree in front of our little house by the airport. He thrusts a nest at me with three ugly naked things. Huh? I asked, what's this? The big man was on the clock and didn't mince for words. I think they're crows, lady. You look like a mom. Where do you want them? He asked, noticing my crutches. Shocked, I said, well, put the nest on the floor by the fridge. It's warm there. Of course, three crows have to be Larry, Curly and Mo. I had too much to do but would call someone later about feeding. Luckily, baby wasn't revved up to full throttle yet. And I quelled it with the bottle. We had our mommy and me moment and I patted a burp out, changed the diapers, cooed with her and wrapped baby like a burrito and placed her in the stroller and taxied her to the bassinet for her nap. I had to find a wild bird organization to find out what crows eat. Found one in white pages and easy peasy. It was canned dog food. Oh, glad it wasn't worms. Called daddy, told him to bring home dog food on his way for lunch. He came home and he wasn't one to comment, just mild acceptance. Luckily, he likes animals we moved to the suburb of Seattle, and he worked long hours, and I was left alone with new baby all day. I had no choice but to take care of the baby on crutches. I did not have balance, so I couldn't stand alone. That never stopped me from accomplishing a task. My motto was, suck it up and get the job done. I came up with busing baby from room to room in her stroller. She could be with me, and I enjoyed her company. I even got so adept, I lowered her down the front steps, pushed her to my car, and put her in the car seat. Wasn't easy, but I managed. I was confident in my abilities on crutches. Got my first ones at eight years old. When I contracted polio, and never stopped moving since. Well, the next morning, two crows in the nest died. Bacteria from the nest killed them. Larry was hopping around. To this day, I have no earthly idea why Larry survived. They all look alike. Curly and Mo are good crow names. Why Larry? Well, I fixed up an old plastic laundry basket and an old towel and Larry moved into the little laundry off the kitchen. No sooner did I finish feeding my daughter in the living room, Larry squawks to high heaven on the other end. Both of them were on two hour feeding schedules. Easier feeding him, spooned some dog food down his gullet and he was good to go. He seemed
seemed to rest in his ugly nakedness with eyes covered by pink membrane. Eventually, I came to love his pure gaze of affection and his jerky joy dance every time I came near him. We would often drive to visit Aunt Dolores in Tacoma, 30 miles away. She met us and we went shopping or sightseeing on her day off from the army base. Drove over the Narrows Bridge, a suspension bridge that is shut down if too windy. We visited her army base. She was a sister that wanted out of her small town and joined the military. She was a WAC, or Woman Army Corps. She worked at the McCord Air Force Base. She had a little bungalow that she just got done painting herself. Her kitchen was ship-shaped. Even the toaster was kept in the lower cupboard. She was so fun for me. I was a lonely, low self-esteem, insecure young lady far away from home. She had a sense of adventure and fun. She took us in when we were newlyweds and let us stay there while we looked for a place to stay. One time she took us on the ferry to Whidbey Island in the Puget Sound. We saw orca pods or killer whales. Their black and white shimmering bodies leaping together in a graceful dance of the sea. So beautiful. Northwest was God's country, according to many. The gloomy, humid, bone-cold winters will drive you insane. I made Daddy drive us up Mount Rainier, the chief of the Cascade Range, to see the sunlight. When Paradise Point was cloudy, we went higher to Sunrise Point and were always greeted by warm, happy sun. We spread our picnic blanket and the sun's rays powered us up. I was so happy to come back to sunny, cold, below zero Minnesota winters after one winter in Seattle. And this one is um, Free Range Child. We moved from Minnesota and the only family we had was my husband's wonderful aunt in Tacoma and his friend from a small town who stayed with us until he found an apartment in Seattle so he could attend the University of Washington. We were new on the block. Lucky for me, one of my neighbors was friendly. She was Mormon and came from Salt Lake City. She came over and introduced herself and brought her four-year-old son. He was a terror. Red-headed and free-range, he took our cast cassette tapes and unraveled the contents. He dumped one of my plants, dirt all over my freshly vacuumed carpet, dumped a sippy cup 